Good day, folks. A little experiment that turned out to work very well. I tried to use the PEG cell as a reactive X electrode. So basically, as I've been doing with some previous videos, I've demonstrated and talked about the importance of reactive power and what it can do and what it cannot do. So watch previous videos if you don't understand what I mean about building a capacitive power supplies and all the benefits into doing that. So I figured, hey, since this is an electrode, it's got capacitive properties and it, it's um, self-regaging, it would be good for a reactive power supply so it could drop my current because we always need a trigger, folks. There's no free lunch, but we need a little bit of real power to maintain our dipoles and run our switches and that sort of thing. But apart from that, uh, the whole point is to use as less real power as possible without introducing so much resistance and heat. So the reactive power supplies is a good solution to bring the current down without wasting it all in resistance and heat. So not only does this peg cell work excellent at doing that, but it also works at contributing maybe a milliamp or so of that current. So it contributes as well and limits our current input to a workable levels that we want. So what I did is this is basically just driving a regular AC to DC 12 volt power supply. This 12 volt power supply is scaled really down with the reactive power running only at milliamps thanks to the PEG cell. It is going into um, this high voltage, high frequency um, generator here for neons and whatnot and it's charging a series of capacitors, a total of 28 UF at 1000 volts. When it reaches the 1000 volts level, it triggers this 1000 volt gas charge, this charge tube that energizes the high voltage side of a microwave transformer. So we're dumping what's unusual and different here in my previous videos. I would dump, you know, the high current, low voltage. Uh, sorry, the high voltage low current into the capacitor and get the uh, amps that way. What I'm doing here is I'm getting the still the amps but charging it really really quick at high frequency high voltage so I could discharge the high current high voltage amp discharge on the high voltage side so that I get a much lower but higher current um, output secondary side about a hundred volts. So that 100 volts right now goes to the output of a charger. But to show you the demonstration, I got a large capacitor to drive a motor. To show you, my point is how it's very nice to be able to use very low current drives to be able to generate high current pulses with the help of transformers and capacitors. But I'm kind of doing like the Tesla thing, but in reverse, you know. It's really, really affected in reverse as well, if you know what you're doing. So on top of that, during the discharge spike, I take the inductive kickback with the reverse diode and send this into the high voltage side of a, um, which would be the primary high voltage side of another AC transformer. And I scale because it's a really big spike at a thousand volts. You could just imagine, you know, when you do a couple volts, you get like 24. So this is a big, big spike, but still an inductive kickback. So I make it more manageable with this transformer, which steps it down to about 24 volts, and I rectify the secondary lower voltage, and that's also an additional system that goes back into the charging. So what I'm doing is I'm also recovering the spike from the generated burst. So we've got a few mechanisms at work, and it works very well. So I drew up a schematic for to help folks understand here. The lighting is bad. Let's see if I can change the angle a bit here. But this is the PEG cell battery charger. So the PEG cell here acts as your reactive and it's a limiter. So you get milliamps limited output. This goes into a small DC transformer just enough to drive the high voltage neon transformer. There's the high voltage cap dump. And I will post the schematic at the end of the video. Just wanted to show you this. So now the whole point is really cool. So I'm going to plug this in to the mains here. You could use my whole idea to was to try and build an efficient 
a battery charge it. I want to charge my battery eventually down the line with this, with the mains, because that's what I have here. But I'm sure you could use an inverter or anything else, but it's just convenient for me. So I'm going to plug this in and I'll show you these cap dumps. It takes a few moments to, to charge. There you go. Let's see right away the motor spins. I don't know if there's any battery left in here. So we get really high current bursts when it does kick in. 81 milliamps. Because these are serious discharges. But it's this is smoothing out a big capacitor. But I'm just showing you what little, little... And this is what's going on here. Um, there's the spark gap discharging every few seconds because it's very low current, but it's a very, very high burst because of this energizer here. A thousand volts discharges at 28 UF through the spark gap going into the microwave transformer, giving you 110 volts high current bursts. And this is what we're doing. And here I've got the scope on the inductive kickback to show you the recycling of the spike. And we get about 20 some, if I can catch it here. Takes a moment to get, it's very sharp. There you go, 27 volts there. But it's very sharp. My scope doesn't catch it every time here. If I can change the resolution a bit here. There you go. There's that spike. So that's about 28 volts and we recover the inductive kickback plus the discharge here and this runs nice and cool and also contributes to the system. So all in all a pretty good system I would say and I hope with the help of the circuit diagram it helps you understand. Now something maybe I should save for another day, which I haven't done here, but because I'm not planning to use the motor, but if you take the one of the inputs, like let's say the plus of the motor that goes in here and put it to the primary of another transformer, on the secondary you'll read, like I was reading close to 100 volts of RF just coming in. So I could use that as an additional system and re-gauge back in, but I'm not really uh, looking into building uh, generators right now but if this were to spin another generator you see what i'm getting at recycle the rf as well into an lc circuit but for now this is going to go into a battery instead but i just want to show you those discharges which are working very well for a very very little milliamp input here thanks to the peg cells reactive stage so i hope you understand and I will post this circuit diagram at the end of my video so you all can see what I'm doing here. And again, I must emphasize, no free lunch, folks. We have to put in a little bit of real power to maintain our diodes, our, di our dipoles, and run our switching and our power supplies. All can be very low current, and we let the capacitors generate the higher current discharges through the various mechanisms. So something else I want to do down the line here is set up another tap for the one wire. I'm not even interacting with that yet. That's another whole system. That could charge another 100 volts additionally, a few capacitors, and then put that back into the system. But one thing at a time. This is pretty cool, I think, anyways really recycling every part of that spike back and front basically at minimal losses